Hi there, it's back to Mike here and this is the Ortlieb seat patch. I've been using this seat patch for a three day bikepacking trip here in northern Sweden and I've also used it for a couple of day rides as well. And this seat pack is part of a complete bikepacking setup consisting of the seat pack, the frame pack, the handlebar pack and accessory pack plus the two fork packs. So all Ortlieb bags are 100% waterproof and for me who's doing a lot of touring here in northern parts of Sweden where we get a lot of rain that feature is really important. This is the largest version. This one is 16.5 liters and there's also a smaller one that's 11 liters. And while this may be on the larger side, you're able to compress it down to almost whatever size you choose. And Ortlieb states that the smallest size this is able to compact is down to about 8 liters. If you're like me doing a lot of touring up here in the north where it can be both cold and rainy, and you have the need to store a couple of extra layers, the larger model is definitely the one for you. But if you're doing a lot of touring in warmer and drier climates, my recommendation would be to go for the smaller 11 liter one. So in the seat pack I try to store things that I don't need during the day, instead things that I might need at camp in the evening. Since having to open and close the seat pack all throughout the day is just going to mean that it's going to lose its firm shape. So ideal things to store inside of the seat pack are things that are a bit bulky but are easy to compact down to a really small size. So I usually store my down sleeping bag in here and also a bunch of clothes that I can compress down to a really small size. And a pro tip here, if you're thinking about storing your down sleeping bag here, make sure to ditch your compression sack. Since it's a lot easier to just chug everything into the bag and then compress everything once it's inside of the bag. Instead of having an already compressed sleeping bag and trying to fit that inside of the seat pack. If you do that, you're just going to be stuck with a bunch of pockets of air and the seat pack is probably going to have a pretty interesting form. <laughs> and if you're planning on storing some heavier things, such as a multi-tool, make sure to pack that down here in the seat pack, close to the seat post, since this is the lowest point of gravity on the whole bag. If you were to put heavier things up top here, this bag will just wobble around a whole lot during the day. So after you fill the bag with your things you start to roll the end of the bags to shut it. Sort of like you do with a compression sack or an Ortlieb pannier. And they've added a valve onto the side to make sure that all excess air gets squeezed out as well. And when you've finished closing the bags and tightening the straps, remember to close the valve and the bag should have a pretty firm shape. During my three days of using this, I didn't feel the seat pack one single time. It might wobble a bit, but that was nothing that I felt when I was in the saddle. And since this was my first time using the seat pack, I wasn't really used to packing it really tight. So I hope with time that I'm able to learn how to pack it properly and it will be even more tight and compact. And this seat bag consists of just one unit. So if you're planning on taking this inside of your tent in the evening, you need to unmount the whole thing. There are other brands of seat bags that come in two units. So you can leave a sort of a harness on the bike and just remove the dry sack. And usually these kinds of dual unit seat bags can be a bit heavier as well. So what I usually do is, since I only have my down bag and a bunch of clothes, I just remove everything that I'm going to need during the evening and the night and bring that into the tent. And then I leave the seat pack onto the bike during the night. So on top of the bag you have this adjustable shock cord. So you can store an extra jacket or a couple of flip flops or in my case a tripod on top of the seat pack. And in the rear you have a couple of pairs of reflective patches. 
And the idea of having several ones of these is no matter how much you compress the seat back down to, you're always going to have a pair of these towards the traffic coming from behind. And lastly, you also have a couple of accessory slots in the rear here where you can attach a rear light. With some seat bags, it's a common problem that you have tire rub between the underside of the seat bag and the tire. And with this bag, you need to have around 15 centimeters of visible seat post and the clearance between the saddle rail and the top of the tire needs to be 18 centimeters to avoid tire rub altogether. So overall, this is a really nice bag and I've been super happy with it so far. The next video in this series is my review of the frame pack and you can watch that video by clicking the link down in the corner. And if you want to watch all of these bags in action, you can watch my latest bikepacking trip here in northern Sweden by clicking the link up in the corner here. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one.